What if the admirals chose to become pirates instead of marines? Imagine how different the series would look if instead of forming the world government's greatest military force, these powerful individuals decided to join the race for the One Piece. Which one of them has the highest potential to become the Pirate King? Well, at least for one former admiral, we already know what would happen. Akainu's Magu Magu no Mi is said to have one of the highest offensive powers among all the Devil Fruits, and Akainu is already a proven leader, steadfast in his pursuit of absolute justice, and is the only one confirmed to have defeated a fellow admiral. As a pirate, he would undoubtedly be as ruthless as he is now, and as relentless as we witnessed in Marineford in his pursuit of Ace and Luffy. Akainu or Sakazuki had a rather rough upbringing, as seen when he was drawn as a child with his ragged clothes and the young boy holding a knife, meaning that we can count on the fact that even if he didn't pursue life in the Navy, Sakazuki would be just as ruthless, if not more, without the authoritative restrictions that the marine institution imposes. In fact, if he was a pirate, Sakazuki would probably have the highest kill count in the series, killing any pirate, marine, or even civilians that get in his way. His brutality as a pirate could earn him a reputation as the second coming of Rocks the Zebek, while being involved in legendary rivalries against other big-name pirates. He might even end up being the most infamous pirate of his generation, sandwiched between Roger and Shanks' respective eras. According to One Piece author Echiro Oda, the current fleet admiral Sakazuki is so strong that if he were to become the protagonist of One Piece, the series would end in just one year. I mean, just imagine if you replaced Luffy with Sakazuki and he took the same path Luffy did in the original timeline, facing off against Luffy's past opponents, we wouldn't even need a time skip, and Sakazuki would just breeze through all the necessary steps to find the treasure and end the series early, leaving the rest of us very depressed without One Piece to watch. Okay, so that's only one of the admirals, but what about the rest of them? Before we get into all the other admirals, make sure to salute and subscribe if you'd like more One Piece videos. Now let's look at Garp, who although was never an official admiral, is powerful enough to have even become fleet admiral if he didn't refuse the promotion to rise above the vice admiral position. As a pirate, Garp would definitely have the most fun and interesting journey, especially being of the same era as legends like Roger, Whitebeard, and Rocks. He fought these men as the marine hero, but imagine the chaos of these legends fighting over each other's booty. As a child, Garp is the embodiment of an adventuring kid who would tame monsters along the way in search for treasure. Remind you of anyone? Garp is literally Luffy if he decided to become a pirate. If you look at how Garp was drawn as a child, you could even say he kind of looks like a joy boy. And as someone who also carries the will of D, Garp would most likely be Roger's closest competitor when it comes to finding the hidden treasure that would later be known as the One Piece. The two would be involved in a fun but extremely intense rivalry where Roger and Garp would constantly butt heads and clash one minute and then party till the sun comes up the next before vowing to beat one another in their race to claim all the world's treasures. In fact, having shared the ocean with the rest of the great pirates in his generation, Garp would have likely developed rivalries with both Roger and Whitebeard while also being on fairly good terms with each of them. A temporary alliance over a common cause is also not out of the question between these three legends in a similar way to what we've seen of the Luffy, Kid, and Law Alliance at Wano. I can imagine Rox the Zepek would have likely been the one to play the role of an evil that must be toppled down figure that Kaido played at Wano. And I can't think of anything more exciting than seeing these three legends fight side by side. But if Garp was a pirate, it would be a massive blow to the Marines, not only because they would lose arguably the strongest Marine in history, but Garp as a pirate would inspire many other people to follow in his footsteps. In a similar way, Roger did in the past and what his grandson Luffy is currently doing. Garp is definitely the most protagonist-like character on this list and the Navy struck gold that Garp chose to become a Marine because had Garp decided to become a pirate, the One Piece world may be completely without Marines at all. And before we get into the rest of the Admirals, a big thank you to today's sponsor, Filmora. With Filmora, you can bring your video vision to life. Filmora is a cross-platform video editing tool available on Windows, Mac and mobile so that you can create videos quickly with ease. With a ton of built-in editing features, Filmora is also launching AI features such as speech-to-text or text-to-speech, meaning that you can create videos without even recording yourself. For example, this is Bot Joy Girl saying, Hello, my Nakamatachi. Or how about in Japanese? Konnichiwa, 
仲間たちです。フィモーラを試してみてはいかがでしょうか ?It has AI portrait, meaning that it's even easier for me to transport Luffy into different settings such as Marijuana or Smart Recommendation, where f i l m o r a will offer you with personalized recommended resources that's specific to your video. And this is just the beginning. There is so much more to love about f i l m o r a With loads more cool features, you definitely gotta give it a try. So make sure to use the link below to download f i l m o r a now. Making your own video has never been easier. Kuzan or former Admiral Aokiji is another figure we don't just have to imagine what would happen if he became a pirate, but it's rather more of a case that we're just gonna have to wait and see through his future actions because Kuzan is currently a member of the Blackbeard Pirates. During his time as a Marine, he followed the code of lazy justice, which would still be fitting for him had he decided to become a pirate. First of all, while the Admirals are powerful enough to travel by themselves to handle strong and powerful opponents as a pirate, this idea could not be any Truer than when applying it to Kuzan. Due to the power of his devil fruit, Kuzan would have the easiest means to navigate the wide ocean even without a crew. But if he is a part of a crew, Kuzan would more than likely become the reluctant captain of a pirate ship just because of how powerful he is. But I think a more fitting role for him is to be another strong pirate's first mate. And since we've already mentioned Garp being the captain of his own ship, imagine Kuzan being Garp's second in command, making Kuzan one of, if not the strongest. Vice captain in the entire series. Regardless, any pirate crew Kuzan decides to join would instantly have an advantage in navigation over other pirates as well as having a reliable combatant in their ranks. Travel wise, Kuzan could just freeze the ocean so that his crew could go wherever their destination is. Although ideally, this would require the crew making significant alterations to their ship to accommodate them being able to travel on the ice road that Kuzan would create. Or if that sounds like too much of a big task, Kuzan could just shield his pirate. Cruise ship with ice walls to safely travel the seas, which also sounds perfect when escaping from anyone chasing them, such as the Marines. And as a fighter, we've seen that Kuzan is able to take on an entire crew by himself, so just imagine the damage he could cause as a pirate without the moral ground and code to follow as a Marine. The only mercy other pirates would receive is if Kuzan decides not to go all out because his laid back nature gets the best of him. Kizaru is the only one out of the original group of admirals to. Still hold his position, and his calm and easygoing demeanor is a trait that he shares with some of the most likable pirates in the series. Seriously, though, this man is perpetually calm. He's probably the most prominent admiral in terms of how many pirates he's been shown to deal with in the series. He easily defeated multiple supernovas at Sabodi and captured 500 pirates before leaving the island. He even looked good against Whitebeard and managed to give him a serious injury. Based on what Sentomaru calls him in the series, if Kizaru was to become a pirate, he would most Likely have a Yakuza themed pirate crew, much like a stronger version of Beige's Mafia crew. Similarly to Kuzan, Kizaru would also have an advantage in terms of navigation, given he's able to travel from one distance to another at super speed. From what we've seen in the use of his devil fruit, he could potentially jump his way from island to island, landing on ships in between to even completely taking over weaker pirate crews, or just completely wiping them out, depending on if he's feeling murderous that day, or ransacking through unlucky. Marine ships traveling the seas. On top of being impossibly strong, Kizaru is also hinted to have a high level of intelligence. As a child, Kizaru was shown to be a studious little boy who spent his time consuming knowledge as suggested through the stack of books next to him. So don't be surprised if he's later revealed to be adept when it comes to science and technology that is sure to be beneficial should he have decided to take the path of piracy. In fact, as a free sea traveler, Kizaru may have even become a part of a different group, such as the now defunct. Science group Mads, making him the unquestionable strongest member of the group, which is actually very fitting given he is the exact same age as both Vinsmoke Judge and Queen, completing the Yellow Trio. And on top of this, with his brand of unclear justice, even outside of the Marines, this code seems to align with the very ambiguous science group, being once the laboratory for peace, but then also being filled with members who have gone on to do things that are very far from peaceful. And if he were to join the chase for the One Piece, or 
Rosalino, the yellow monkey, would be a problem for anyone who gets in his way. Although I doubt he would be visibly devastated if he doesn't find the treasure. But either way, he is a terrifying figure when it comes to both brute and brains. Admiral Ryokugu or Aramaki, the worst of the bunch. Take away his great admiration and devotion to the world government and to the world nobles. And then Aramaki is perhaps, in the traditional sense, the most pirate-like out of all the admirals. So flipping his ideals to make it more piratey, Aramaki would more than likely idolize the likes of Rox the Zebek. Zebek being the epitome of what a pirate is. In a similar way to how Ryokugu admires current fleet admiral Sakazuki, with his code of justice being deadly justice, this could translate very well to a life of piracy. And with his unique devil fruit powers making him extremely strong on top of his idolization of Zebek, Aramaki would likely be leading an evil pirate crew that was fulfilling the will of Zebek long before Blackbeard ever started. And Aramaki seems to be a balanced mix of impulsive decision making as well as recognizing when he's out of his depth, as seen when he decided to infiltrate Wano against Sakazuki's orders, but then backing down when he came across the red hair pirates alone. So this is already one similarity he shares with Zebek's seeming follower Blackbeard, and if he surrounds himself with like-minded evil pirates as Blackbeard did, maybe even Blackbeard himself, then they're sure to spread terror and shake the world of piracy. Ujitora is the closest thing to what true justice represents, and perhaps the most ideal figure to represent what the marines should be, being one of the straight up good guys. He cares about common citizens, showing the highest respect for human rights than we've seen of any of the other admirals. And these ideals makes it difficult to imagine Fujitora or Isho as a pirate, but if he were to be one, Isho's human justice translated to piracy would make him one of the good pirates. He would have a scary reputation due to how powerful he is, his strength only matched by his compassion for others. The closest comparison to what his ideal pirate career would turn out to be would be Whitebeard as a pirate who looks out for regular people and offers his protection to many different weaker islands. In fact, if Isho decided to become a pirate instead of enlisting during the military draft, I can imagine him gathering like-minded crew members and filling the role that Whitebeard played after the Yonko passed away, which would have a lot of implications such as Jinbei never needing to join Big Mom's crew but that's another discussion of its own. Isho, with his physical strength and swordsmanship alone, would be strong enough to deal with a number of pirates on the seas. Just one attack from his devil fruit ability is enough to sink multiple pirate ships or any marines chasing him down to the bottom of the ocean. He may even play the role of ally to the Straw Hats, perhaps a scenario where the Straw Hats and Isho started off as enemies, but later come to the conclusion that they're both here to protect the island, therefore forming a temporary alliance where after their victory, Luffy and and Isho would argue over whose protection the island would fall under. And although he would more than likely be everyone's favorite frontrunner to claim the One Piece, I bet he would be more than happy just as long as the people are protected. Sengoku is probably the hardest ex-admiral to imagine as a pirate. He has shown dedication to being a marine, so applying this to a career of piracy would instantly make Sengoku one of the scariest pirates to deal with in the series. While he may be a fleet admiral within the marines, this leadership position doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be the case should he choose to become a pirate. Upholding honor and logical thinking, I can imagine Sengoku to be a very reliable first mate, being an individual who could very well be captain of his own crew if he so wanted, but instead playing the role of someone who is able to steer the captain straight when the captain loses his way, like Zoro does to Luffy, or being the disciplinarian of a crew similar to what we've seen of Rayleigh. And if we have the ideal scenario where both Garp and Sengoku are pirates, I could see their positions reversing with Sengoku now being Garp's right-hand man, making them an almighty duo that is perfectly poised to finding the One Piece and crowning Garp as the Pirate King. But regardless of who ultimately finds the great treasure, there is no doubt that each of the admirals or former admirals or could-be admirals would have bounties that range in the astronomical amounts that we've seen of the Yonko throughout the series, most likely each of them becoming one of the Yonko in their own right and having great rivalries amongst each other and with the other legends in the story. If the marines don't recruit powerful navy soldiers to rival these legendary pirates, then the One Piece world would be nothing but a lawless ocean filled with monsters. But what do you think? What do you think would happen if these admirals became pirates? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you to all of our Patreon and channel members. And thank you to everyone for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.